Ladies and gentlemen, the Senders. I got here in 72. I was 17. Uh, I came here to spend one month. I was in art school in Paris, so I came here in the summer to spend one month. And 35 years later, I'm still here. The way I moved to New York, what happened is that when I was living in Boston with a whole bunch of friends, there were a bunch of crazy artists there. And my friend Bruce, who I came to the States with, uh, his best friend was Nan Golden, the photographer, and her friend David Armstrong, also a photographer. They were moving to New York, so this whole group of people decided to move, so I came alone. And so little by little I started to meet everyone. Nancy Spongen and Sid Vicious became the most famous of the bunch, fortunately because she died in such a horrible way. But um, I met Nancy at Mother's, the club, uh, that was uh, when it was still open. She invited me over. Uh, to do some heroin, which was the drug of choice in New York in 75, very sadly, because it damaged a lot of lives and it killed a lot of people. And um, But Nancy, like everybody else at the time, was very naive about it and, you know, stupidly starting this kind of hard drugs. And so I went to her place and um, we hung up little by little, actually very quickly, became a good friend with her. And she, unfortunately, was getting all strung out, so she was pretty fucked up, if I might say. And um, she was also becoming very, very sad because she couldn't find a boyfriend. Finally, one crazy night, she called me up at home. She had slashed her wrist, so she told me she was calling to say goodbye. She had just committed suicide. I lived very close at the time, still by the Chelsea, so I ran over to her house. She lived down between 8th and 9th Avenue on 23rd Street over there. So I ran to her house and yeah, indeed she had cut a wrist, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad. She didn't get an artery, so it wasn't you know, so bad. So she calmed down, we talked, and she was crying her head off, explaining to me how she could not get a boyfriend, nobody wanted to go out with her, and it was really making her miserable. And I told her, yeah, nobody wants to go out with you because you're a junkie and it's disgusting, especially a girl. It's, it's really not the most attractive thing. So what you should do is, you know, quit the dope, stop, you know, taking heroin and quit your bad habit. And uh, yeah, but she said, I can't, I can't, I try, but I can't. I said, well, yeah, it's too, too easy. What you should do is split. You should leave New York, go somewhere else, Forget about it. Go for a vacation. Go somewhere and keep your habit. Now, where am I going to go? I said, well, how about you go to Paris? It's beautiful. Take a vacation in Paris. I said, I don't speak French. I don't want to go to Paris. What am I going to do in Paris? I said, I don't know. Why don't you go to London? That's nice. They speak English in London. Why don't you go there? She said, I stopped thinking about it. And she was really in love with Jerry Nolan. He was the Heartbreakers drummer. And, um, she stopped thinking about that and think, yeah, London, that's not a bad idea, you know, I, yeah. And so that's it. She was now, she was hooked on that idea. She was going to go to London. So she left for London. <laughs> One funny thing that happened is that she had a huge cat, big black cat. And she asked me when she left for London if I could keep her cat. I very nicely said, sure, no problem. Leave me the cat. I'll, you know, I'll take care of him. Now, what I didn't know is the cat was junkie too. Now, I'm not joking, it really was. The cat was hooked on to heroin because she was leaving her dirty spoons and the cat had been attracted to the smell or something. So he, he had been licking the spoons with the leftovers of heroin. You know, if it can hook up a person in, in, a, in a few days, imagine a cat. So that poor cat was completely hooked up. So she dropped them off and he went hiding under a place, you know, and under some furniture. And I had a little kitten. And the next morning, that cat attacked my cat, and he was tearing it to pieces. So I tried to grab him and, you know, so to separate them so he wouldn't kill my cat. But this cat jumped on my arm and hooked onto my arm like this. Ah, every teeth and cloth into my forearm very painful and so I had no idea a cat could attack a person but a junkie cat that's that's different <laughs> I find that so this cat was hooked onto my arm I didn't know what the hell to do I couldn't rip him off it was it was impossible he was like ah so I had to actually knock him against the wall so I finally knocked him out of it and he 
he dropped on the floor and I ran to the hospital. So that's what happened with Nancy's cat. Meanwhile, Nancy was in England and uh, she called me up from England and it was kind of comical because within a month she had adopted a very strong British accent. So she called me up and goes, I fell out, it's non soy And I'm like, what? And she was all excited. She was calling me to tell me she was in heaven. She had met way past her expectation. She had the boyfriend of her dreams, Sid Vicious. And I was like, Sid who? Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols. Like, oh, wow, I heard of him. That sounds great, Nancy. So she was really, really happy to tell me she had just met Sid Vicious. I still apologize to the Sex Pistols to have sent Nancy Spongeon over there. That was not a really good idea, so time proof. But at the time, they were very happy. One friend I, I told recently, I wrote this book, I said, what's the book about? I said, all the stories, you know, and all those anecdotes, and he goes, oh, that's great, you did that, that way you won't have to tell us anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>